Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Wednesday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks for joining us. My Bible is open in front of me. It's open to the book of 2 Peter, the end of chapter 1. If at all possible, reach over, pick up your own copy of God's Word and join me there. 2 Peter chapter 1, the last three verses will be our focus today. While you're getting your Bible, I'll also get something on which you can jot some notes. I've got an outline to give you today. We won't complete the outline, but I'll give you the outline before us, and that'll help us to uh, not only deal with our study today, but be prepared for tomorrow, Lord willing. I've got a gospel tract in my hand. Now, that word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T. It's a word describing a short written presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How can a person have the sin stain that's on their soul due to personal sin? How can that sin stain be removed? How can they have the sin stain removed, the gift of eternal life given to them, and then have have assurance of heaven. That's what a gospel track does. It's an evangelism tool. I want to give you some free gospel tracks, and I'll say more about that here in a moment. But to lead into our Bible study time, please pay attention here. The verses before us today are very, very important. They're important theologically. See, the, these verses form the uh, some of the most foundational verses on which we build our belief about the Bible. There always has been and always will be people who are struggling with how much authority the Bible should have in their life, in their churches, in their homes, and even in our nation. Their opinion on this matter will be based squarely on what their view is and how we got the Bible. Your opinion and then your use of the Bible will be based squarely on what you feel about where the Bible came from. Is it the product of men's minds only, or is it a book given by God's own action? Now, for many of us, we say that the Bible is God's word, and we would get into heated debates with somebody if they tried to teach otherwise in our local church, and that would be a good thing. But once the debate is over, what do we actually do with our Bibles? That's going to say far more about what our real opinion is as to where the Bible came from. The Apostle Peter believed that the Bible was a book of divine origin. But then he's going to tell us what to do with it personally because he says it came from God. Now, join me, please, and let's wrestle over the revelation of God. 2 Peter chapter 1. I mentioned those gospel tracts here a moment ago. At the end of the program, my announcer is going to give you some methods by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Would you please be ready to do that? I want to send you a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracts. One of those tracts is this one entitled, I Have Plenty of Time. I Have Plenty of Time. It begins with a true story about a gal named Mary. When she was 19, she was invited to hear the gospel. She heard the gospel. Her heart was touched by the gospel, but she wanted to postpone receiving Christ as Savior because she had, well, she had a a fun fling to go to. The trouble is she never got to see the next day because of a car accident. Dear friend, it starts with a rather difficult story but it brings up the points that life is precious and is a gift from God, but life is uncertain, and tomorrow may be too late for us to deal with the matter of the sin stain on our soul. Oh, beloved, Christ died on the cross, shed his blood, that we through him can be saved from sin. 
Would you let me send you this track? It's part of that sample packet. Please be ready when my announcer gives our contact information. You don't need to any purchase. It just will send it to you free. You can just go to our website, which is www.bibletracksinc.org, and you can order that sample packet there. If your Bible is open to 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning at verse 19, here is what the Bible says. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. We're going to stop there. Now, friend, listen, your views and beliefs on the Bible are critical to virtually everything in life. Now, it's not critical to the issue of what plants you grow in your garden or what house you buy in your town, those kind of things. But when it comes to things like where will you spend eternity, how will you and I raise our families, how we will and will not conduct our lives, how we'll operate our churches and so on, those kind of things, the Bible is not just a critical book, it is the only critical book. There's an old historic saying that goes like this, the Bible is our only rule for faith and practice. Now, my friend, that statement is true, but it needs to be said often and then defended regularly. Now, verse 19 begins with these words, we have also. That word also ties these three verses with the three previous ones. Earlier in verses 16, 17, and 18, Peter was defending his teaching, his doctrine. Peter and the other apostles did not use fables or myths when they taught. They were actual eyewitness of the person of Jesus, his work, and his glory. Now, though, he says, we also have our Bible. Now, when Peter penned these words, the New Testament portion of the Bible was not yet complete. It was in process, but not complete. Back then, Peter and them did have the completed Old Testament. But all that is here in these verses, what they say about the Bible they had then would apply to our completed Bible today. Now, I'm going to be using three words to walk through verses 19, 20, and 21. I'm going to give all three of them now. We'll only deal with one of them today. But the three words are these, reliability. That's number one, reliability. Number two is the word role, R-O-L-E, role. Uh, We're talking about what role the Bible plays. And thirdly, the word is revelation. How did we get our Bible? All right, let's deal with that first one today. What about the reliability of the scriptures? This is based upon verse 19. We have, the Bible says, a more sure word of prophecy. The word prophecy here simply is referring to the Bible, not just the prophetic parts, but the Bible in total here. There's two key words that are used here at the beginning of verse 19. Those two English words are more sure. These two English words translate just one Greek word. I know a whole lot of believers who do not get excited about learning Greek words and so on. But this is one of those times that it would be wise for you to pay attention. The words more sure serves, at least the Greek word behind it, as a comparative adjective. Are you impressed with my English skills? A comparative adjective. Let's take it one step at a time. You know what an adjective is. It's a describing word. It's used to better identify the object, the noun for which it is used. The object here is the word of prophecy, talking about the Bible. A number of times in the Bible, this Greek word is translated by our English word steadfast. So, our Bibles here are described as being steadfast. They are sure, or we could put it this way, they are firmly in place. The Bible is firmly in place. It is sure. But I said the word is a comparative adjective. You know what a comparison is. 
Well, the reliability of our Bibles is compared to the things mentioned back in verses 16, 17, and 18. And that's where Peter reminds us that he and James and John saw the Lord on the Mount of Transfiguration. They saw the Lord transfigured before them. Peter has just said that people, believers in his day, should listen to his voice and what he teaches because of his personal experience with Jesus. But now, Peter says, we have an even better, a more reliable source of truth. We have the Word of God. Now, please do not just say, oh, Pastor Mark, that's nice, and then move on. Peter has just said that God's written word is more steadfast and more sure than the personal having a personal experience with Jesus. Now listen to me, I don't mean to be harsh here, but this means that rather than you and I getting caught up in some boy's supposed trip to heaven or some man's 90 minutes in heaven or some preacher's vision or dream, our reliability on the scriptures, on the tangible revelation of God, ought to take precedent and, pardon me, kick out all the other stuff. That's a straightforward statement, but we have the word of God, and it's more reliable than what even the apostles experience in their personal walk with Christ. Again, my our word for today is reliable. Now, I could go and I could tie in other places in the Bible where the Bible, where God's word is described as eternal, it's described as being indestructible, it's purer than silver that's been refined seven times, and I could go on here. All of this would help and serve to bolster the why. The why should you and I rely only on God's word? Now, this is why, my friend, you and I need to be in a local church which is based only on on the Bible, not the Bible and man's tradition, not the Bible and the church fathers, not the Bible and some other supposed holy book, just the Bible. When I have preached, have I ever quoted the church fathers? Yes, but not to be in place of or an equal authority with the Bible, just to augment and say, here is what the early church fathers believed. They believed the same thing we do because they were reading the same Bible. But now, friend, if the Bible is that reliable, then why do some of us go two and three and four and five and six and seven days without ever reading it? You, we can have these debates and defend with tenacity if somebody ever tried to undercut the authority of the Bible in our local church try to replace its reliability with some other thing alongside of the Word of God. But that would be a great defense. But really, please tell me, what are you and I doing with the Bible day by day? Are we relying on the Bible to be our only trust for what we believe and how we're going to practice our personal walk with God? Now, friend, if you're listening today and you are operating your life on your own dictates, on your own belief system, you have the right to do that. But by what authority do you find your opinions higher than the Word of God? If God's Word came from God, and I believe it did, then you, dear friend, have a weak and non-usable source of authority, and your way will lead to death. Make the Bible your strong point. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.